I have never come across an individual that's so creative that can keep coming up with these great ideas. I'm David Lally. I'm a fashion designer based in Johannesburg, South Africa. I believe I'm fashion. David has got a sweetheart and he knows how to deal with, you know, everybody, with his family, with his clients, you know, and he does take care of them. He does not take no for an answer. He wills things into reality. All right. He understands a brand fundamentally. Yes, of course. That's why we do this. I think what he subsequently learned as well is that um, owning your own business is not for sissies. I bent my fingers. I had success stories. I've disappointed people. But beyond anything else, I learned to become a businessman. What the hell is he going to come up with this time? It always does the best, you know? Fashion, which is art. Art that is not perfect. And if art is perfect, it'd be boring. And who am I? Fashion. You're going to bow. <laughs> David Lale is the most celebrated South African fashion designer, celebrating 16 years in the fashion industry. He's also the first South African designer to have shown on schedule at New York Fashion Week. In 1994, when I was in my first year, we have the annual end year function for designers, price giving and everything, and we have a fashion show. Boom, walks this man and uh, he walks in with a troop of models. And who's this man? Jan Malan. From the word go, we, we just bonded. And he said to me, oh, he knows me. He was a dresser on one of my shows, like many years ago, and, and I ignored him flat. And he, at that show, he decided he's going to work with me in the future. Okay, I'm just gonna do this quick briefing. The house is going to be full of guests, okay? As a designer, we've got to understand that we're artists. And artists, what do they do? They keep painting, they keep creating. And it's very important to be always visible. And the only way to do it is by showcasing at Fashion Weeks, local and international, across the borders, and making sure that you are seen. The first reaction that most people have is they, they look at him in, in, uh, in astonishment and go, that's not possible. How, how are you going to make that happen? We can't do this, we can't do that, we can't do that. He does not take no for an answer. Over the years, after I've graduated, I started seeing Jan in the industry. 2007, we started working together when I joined African Fashion International. Since that day, he's been my show producer of choice. And why? Question is why. People are like, so many other producers, I'm like, no, there's only one here, man. One. Because he understands my madness. He actually provokes my madness. And he loves drama. And this is why we make a good team. It's like, let's go. Let's figure it out. Let's find the people. Let's get the permissions. Let's ask the questions. And we, we simply just keep going. And somehow, miraculously, it comes together. In 2009, when African Fashion International launched Africa Fashion Week, there was also another silent competition. And um, I happened to win the competition with another designer, Tiffany Ember from Nigeria, as best designers in Africa. That gave us an opportunity to showcase at Mercedes-Benz New York Fashion Week. And the global vision actually took off from there. After showcasing with a group of designers from Africa, the whole vision changed. I was like, nobody remembers a group of designers from Africa. I want to be that brand that actually gets an opportunity to showcase at Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week New York. And I want to see my name, David Lally, on, the, on schedule, on the running order for Fashion Week. Designers go to New York, or they go to Paris, and they have, have a show in a restaurant 
on somewhere and then they tell the world that they were at Paris Fashion Week or they were at New York Fashion Week. It doesn't work that way. You need to show on schedule. And I think that's what I was able to do because having worked with um, the organization, that I was able to get um, David on schedule at New York Fashion Week. For me, that was major. Because why? I was on schedule at New York Fashion Week. Guess what the names were saying? Calvin Klein. I still remember this very, very well. Very, very well. Donna Karen, David Lally, and all the other designers. Were, my name was next to, De I mean, my name was next to Donna Karen's name. I was like, yes, this is it. Let's do this, baby. I was raised in Fosnoras, east of Johannesburg. My primary days and high school days, I actually matriculated in Fosnoras. And I am who I am because of the cultural diversity and traditions and township behaviors that I accumulated with time. Um, volatile and beautiful and fun and, and the parties and the lifestyle in the, in the township has been phenomenal. And I know that it played a major role in my journey. Did I ever think that fashion was it? No, I didn't. I, it grew into me. My uncle, from my father's side, he was a fashionista of note, always dressed in a three-piece suit and a tie and a man bag, leather distressed man bag. Did he know it was fashion? No, but it's because he was a liker of things. And he, his job, he was a technician. He fixed people's radios and TVs, but he just like dressed up every day. And I used to walk around with him I didn't know where all this was going until I went to study auditing. And boom, nine months later, I was like, this ain't me, uh, I'm actually out. Till I started hanging out with fashion students and one of them invited me to their class, come and see what we do. Went there one night, they were working, midnight oil burning and everything else. I walk in, there's music banging, they're making patterns, they're sketching. I was like, yes, honey, this is me, I love it. Went to the class next day, I was like, goodbye. Welcome to my home. Um, this is basically where I grew up. This is Basutum, Fosclerus. Um, yeah, lots of beautiful memories. And um, basically, I'm going to introduce you to my mother. My mom was so unhappy with me, breaking down the news that I'm going to become a fashion designer. I didn't understand why must he be a fashion designer because he's a boy. That time, I didn't even know there are boys that can be fashion designers. Her exact words were, I'm not gonna have a son that's gonna be making clothes. I'm like, no ma, I'm not gonna be making clothes. I'm going to be a fashion designer. A boy sewing clothes, he said, yes ma. That's what I want to do. And then January came, she was like, how are you gonna go to school? I was like, I'm gonna hustle. I'm gonna borrow money work part-time and then get registration and how I'm gonna study, I don't know. But guess what, I'm gonna go with or without your blessing because this is what I want to do. And then I made it to get actually a study loan. And then I was able to study first year, second year, third year and my fourth year. And along the journey, she changed her mind because she saw that I was stubborn and I made my mind, I, I made up my mind and I'm not budging. She had to get with the program. And today, love it to bits. I just thought it's his talent that means it was his talent from, from you know, from childhood that it is his talent because he used to sew dolly clothes with his sisters. He used to play dollies, you know, in the house with his sisters. Having my mom in all the events and all my shows and everything is everything. It's that stamp of approval. At the end of the show, I walk out and I see my mom. I become fulfilled and I want to share that moment with her. After I graduated, I was approached by Valley University to become an assistant designer um, for six months. I was supposed to do that for six months, but then Four and a half years later, I was still assistant designer. 
which I loved and appreciated. But in between, I had private clients. I was, I was making wedding dresses, matching dance dresses, bridesmaids dresses and suits. And I was operating from home in Fosloras. I had built myself a two room in the backyard. The one was my bedroom. The other one was my little studio. And I call it Atelier today. Here I am in, in my home slash Atelier. I was working, I was like, you know what? Let me just go to South Kent Fashion Week offices to see, because I knew Fashion Week was coming. Naive as I was, it's like, I thought everybody just gets there, just like showcases. No, boom, walk in, Dion Chang. He was late. <laughs> he actually walked in and he uh, came to ask about the, the new talent, which was then the L new talent. Um, and I said, well, David, um, the closing date is actually now. Dion Chang says, uh, sorry, David, um, applications are closed for Fashion Week but there's a young designer competition that we are still actually um, going to judge tomorrow. So if you really want to be part of that, you might make it. If you can deliver the storyboards tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, um, I will put them in for the, for the judging. Went home, sick as a dog, I had flu. I started sketching overnight. Sketching, scrapping fabrics, treating um, denim in-house, dyeing it and everything else. The following morning, made it on time, submitted my storyboards. When, when we saw the storyboards, it's always very dif different to look at the a storyboard to, to what it translates as. And we look at handwriting of a designer and, and, and David's handwriting was very distinctive. That was what first appealed to us. Monday, I'm busy working in the atelier. I get a call from Dion who says, oh, David, thank you um, for your storyboard, but unfortunately did not make it to the top 12. But we actually enjoyed your storyboards. I'm like, okay, cool, no problem. Cool. Tuesday morning, I get a call again. Sion Cheng again. David, we don't know what you do. One of the designers that was part of the top 12 decided she doesn't want to take the opportunity. And we, as the judges, we decided you were the best candidate to fill in that space. Did I scream? Did I drop the phone? Did I... I did all that because I was so excited, like, oh my word, this is so amazing. As a judging panel, you just, you hold your breath and you hope um, that the garments translate um, as they do from a storyboard. And guess what happened? I won the competition. I was beyond happy. And in 2003 at South Confession Week, that's where David Lally, the brand, was launched. So welcome to our studio. This is basically the house of David Lally where we do everything in house. We do patterns, we do our own production. We don't say EMT anything, meaning cut, make and trim. We produce from design, pattern making, cutting, whether we do um, mass production or we do ones of customers, that's what we do. My business philosophy is work hard, try hard, fall, stand up, dust yourself off, until you make it. Because the challenges that you go through, the successes that you go through, helps to build character in you as an entrepreneur. Everybody wakes up like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, I've just started my business. And question is, do you understand the word entrepreneur? Meaning you have to be creative. Before you become a business person, you have to be creative. It doesn't mean clothing or fashion or anything. Be creative in the industry that you want to excel in or even service the people with. And understand the basic skills of business. I learned to become a businessman and because I know that I studied fashion, I understood everything, I did all the razzmatazz and the fabulousness, but there was no business. 15 years down the line, I have learned to become a businessman. I've learned to say, do we break even sometimes? Maybe not. Uh, are we profitable? I don't know. But are we in the business of fashion? Yes. Are we the business of fashion? Yes. This is our sewing room. We have uh, quite a few lines here. Uh, the very first line is our sample hand where we create our collections, private clients. And then we have two lines, which is purely production. As you can see, we are busy with our production that is going actually into stores. Realizing how far we've come as a brand, it's really a, uh, I would say, a beautiful feeling and a humbling feeling to say from a concept of becoming a brand to having to employ 
uh, 27 people on a full-time basis, it's a really a great achievement. And also creating jobs. 15 years later into the industry, I feel our journey has just begun. We now have a voice, we have a brand, and we're still trying to become global. Beyond everything else, if you're not loyal to your customers or in business, you're not a brand and you're not gonna become a brand. I always say to young designers, you can be creative like nobody's business, but simple things that will make you an amazing or even a flourishing designer, it's life principles. Respect, discipline, loyalty, consistency. The seasons in business, there's autumn, winter, there's spring, summer, there's times to flourish, there's times to struggle. The lowest moment that I've ever had was when the chips were down and business was not going well. And we had to have, start having short time, lay people off work and not wanting to give up. And the most amazing is to have a team that believes in you when things are not going well. When you're saying, I can't pay wages, I can't do this. We have to do um, creative ways of like really trying to keep the business going. I always say, I give my business one more day every day because you never know what would happen tomorrow. A miracle would happen tomorrow. A bigger opportunity may happen tomorrow. What I'm going through today is not permanent, but it's just part of the journey. With, with David, he's got this urgency, this drive. People that laughed at me when I said I want to become a global designer, I look at them and say, how's your life right now? How long did it take for us to get the show on, on air? Three and a half years, at least. Why are you scared? Who are you scared of? I'm looking for an assistant designer that is going to take me from where I'm at to greater heights. Right now, what I'm seeing is repeats, repeats, repeats. If Nelson Mandela was born in Kunu as an ordinary boy, not knowing where he's going or what's happening, and died as a global icon, who am I not to try? So this is part of the crazy dream that I've actually had over the years to create a brand that's called The Intern by David Lally, and um, now bring it to TV. And it's one of those achievements I look back today and I'm like, yes, we did it. Designer, please come. I said I hate razzmatazz. They're sexy coming in. Bad finishing. Goodbye. Basics are everything. Preparation is everything. It was so dramatic because TV is not fashion. And uh, all I do is fashion. And having to, to have camera 20, almost um, 18, 20 hours a day on your face, it's no child's play. The reason why I conceptualized The Intern by David Lally is because I believe that's where the dream of being a brand started from, when I won the El New Talent in 2003. And over the years, I was never mentored by anyone. I had to make my own mistakes, fall, rise, learn, Ben Bridges, disappoint people, and also introduce myself to the real world of fashion. And I thought it would be amazing to cut corners for the young people, also just give them ideas and also just like mentor them into the journey of becoming brands. it all turned out to be a bitter sour ending with our previous winner when we had not really a disagreement, but having our winner not wanting to accept our terms and conditions. And that really, really costed us 
a lot emotionally, financially, sponsors slash partners, and also I would say tarnished the brand, the intern by David Lale. Not only that, but tarnished the brand David Lale as an entity. If I wanted to destroy a young designer's career or future, I wouldn't have come up with the intern by David Lale. And uh, simple questions like, why would I want to see a young person's future being destroyed in front of my eyes? When it's all said and done, I think it happened for a reason. I'm a much better person now. I've learned my lessons. And uh, going forward, and with season two of The Intern by David Lally, we're coming out stronger. And uh, we're going to make sure that we build this industry because that's what The Intern by David Lally is all about. The biggest dream that I ever have as a designer is to become a lifestyle brand, um, which will have high-end store and um, fused with um, high-end, I would say, fine dining restaurant, fused in with a David Lalle Boutique Hotel, uh, and also just like a place where people know they're gonna come in devastated and frustrated and leave the place being fabulous, looking good, feeling good, and also decide maybe, let's just spend the night while we're at it. And um, to have a house of David Lally in the city of Johannesburg, because I believe the city has got life, it's got energy, and it's got that global appeal that we actually need.